Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining me today. Welcome to End Time Preparedness. Let's begin with a few biblical based scriptures. Lest Satan should get advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. That's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 11. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and a sound mind. That's found in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. And behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? That's found in Jeremiah chapter 32, verse 27. The purpose of these sessions is to educate, empower, uplift, and to provide end-time tools to assist in navigating our new, fast-paced, and ever-changing world. The mission is to obtain knowledge and be aware of options in preparing for disasters and emergency situations. There will be four, four sessions out here, one on water, food, hygiene, and energy. I may add additional sessions, but it is as the Lord leads. In this session, you will obtain information on hygiene, individual and family needs, and ways to improvise. So I wanna give a quick disclaimer that I am not a professional prepper. This information was gained through research and the revelation given to me by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So I ask that you please take the information that you will obtain, pray about it, ask God, how to proceed forward, and I know that he will direct your path on what is right for you and your family. Water is one of the baseline items people use for their hygiene methods. You will need to use your stored water for your hygiene purposes. So to prepare, if you have room, store a gallon or two of water underneath your bathroom sink. The bathroom is one of the main rooms in which people use to do their hygiene in. So just in case, it will be good to have some water there at your disposal. So I'm gonna go over two methods in which you can utilize to have hot or warm water for hygiene. There are many other things out there, but this is all just suggestive. So we're gonna go over the first one, which is the insulated double walled thermal pot. You can also use the thermal mugs or thermal bottles, those things that you use to put your hot or cold beverages in, and typically it will keep it at temperature for 12 to 24 hours. So the scenario is you get up, there's no electricity. So you warm up your water, however you're gonna warm it up, whether you're gonna use a camping stove or whatever, you warm up your water. And let's say you do your hygiene and you have water left over. You can take that extra water that's still already warm or hot and pour it into the thermal pot, the thermal mugs, the thermal bottles. And like I said, it'll keep it at temperature for 12 to 24 hours. So that's one way that you can use so you don't waste your energy. You can conserve energy in a way by just reusing that water that you don't have to reheat again. Another way, this here is called a Coleman Camp Shower. So what it does is basically you take it and you hang it directly in, your, in the sun. So it could be like at a window or something. And what, the, what happens is the, the rays from the sun comes and it heats up the water in that particular bag. That bag holds up to about five gallons of water. So that's solar energy. Nothing, you don't have to do anything, just buy the bag and you're getting energy for free just to have hot water for hygiene purposes. Purposes. So these are just suggestive, as I said before, and a couple of things that you can use for your hygiene purposes for you and your family. When maintaining your hygiene and keeping your body clean, remember that female hygiene wipes, men hygiene wipes, adult bathing wipes, and lastly, baby wipes are most cost efficient and very useful. They sell these um, singular and they also sell them in bulk. Keep in mind that the good thing about wipes is because they come already wet and they're easily disposed of. So you would not have to use your stored water in order to maintain your hygiene. These wipes will do just fine.
Hygiene also includes sanitizing and disinfecting your home. Have these items in your storage to help keep down sicknesses and disease. Remember what happened with toilet tissue in 2020? Well, you don't want that to happen again. So make sure you have the desired brand you like and make sure you take into account how many people you have in your home and their individual needs. Lastly, if you are low on space storage, this coin tissue is for you. And that's C-O-I-N. It's a dry, complex towelette. All you need to do is Put a few drops of water on it to moisten it, and it will swell up into a strong towelette. These can be purchased online if that's something you're interested in. It is important when preparing that you be thorough and detailed. So if there's no running water, then there's no flushing the toilet. What to do? So I'm going to discuss a couple options. Um, there are many more options out there, but I'm just going to discuss these particular two. So there's something called a luggable loo. A luggable loo is a self-contained portable toilet. It has a metal handle on either side, and it also has a snap on and off seat and lid. So what you can do is you can take that metal handle off one side. You can thread through a roll of toilet tissue for your convenience, and it holds up to about five gallons. So what if you don't have the 40 or $50 to buy one of those? What can you do? So you can make your own. Go to your local hardware store and you can purchase one of these painter's buckets. It's the exact same thing. But you may be saying, well, I don't want to sit on no hard rim. So there's another option that you can have. Go and you can purchase a pool noodle. And if it's out of season, you can order it online. You get one of those pool noodles, slit it down the middle the long way, and you will thread it around the, the, the top of your painter's can. And then therefore, that's a seating for you. Don't forget that if you are making your own, purchase one of those buckets with a lid. Um, so it's recommended that if you are using this particular method, your number one and your number two should be separate. So your urine should be in one and your, your feces could be in the other. Um, that just kind of helps with disposal. So your urine, you can easily dilute it some and take it out and water around the tree or bushes or something like that. And you can use it as fertilizer. Now you can't do that with the number two, but there are options for that. Um, definitely, you know, eventually a smell comes with that. And how do you manage that smell especially especially if you're indoors and you don't want to just throw it outside that attracts um you know all kind of bugs and all kind of uh rodents and things like that so what would you do so there are options one is they have portable toilet bags and these um can come um, biodegradable and they also can be compost to dispose of your waste um, and if you don't have that, you can just simply use a kitchen liner, um, the grocery store bags, whatever it is that you would need to catch it. There are options for that. So also to max the smell, there are several things you can do. One is sawdust. You can sprinkle some sawdust. Some people might say, I don't even know what sawdust is and where do you even get it from? But for those who know how to get it from your hardware store or you are familiar with how to do things with trees, that's an, a good way in which you can mask the smell of that. Another way is through baking soda. Baking soda, you can just buy some of that, sprinkle some on top of it. It is a deodorizer, and most of us have, at some point or another, used it in our refrigerator for that point. So that is an option for you. And the last one is one I didn't know or even think about, but you can use cat litter. Cat litter definitely masks the smell, and it helps put it all together. Um, so that you don't have to worry about um, the smell coming through your house. And you can take that, you can put it outside in your local trash, your, in your um, trash bin. Or um, I believe if you're trying to bury things, I think they said it has to go down so far. Um, do your research if you the next step after that and what's convenience for you in which to dispose of it. But these are ways that you can do in your home and things to just to kind of think about and consider. And even like I said before, start talking to your family about what they think is best and what makes sense to them and what they think that you all can do as a family for these particular things because everybody does this. So everybody is going to need it and use it. 
The next few slides you're going to see are just FYI slides, things for you just to remember. As I said, it's good just to be th detailed. Remember that when you get up in the morning, what I did is I got up in the morning and I just took a pen and paper with me and everything I did, I wrote it down. Everything I used, I wrote it down. Um, people in my household, the same thing, things that they use, I wrote it down to make sure that I did not skip a step. So if you use these particular items, don't forget about them. Don't forget about your lotions some people don't like to be dry so get your lotions get your ointments any type of lip care any type of eye care products those particular things will help make your life a lot easier in addition your cotton balls your q-tips any type of alcohol or hydrogen peroxide any type of things that you use for shaving anything for nail care for your toenails or your fingernails don't forget these items Remember when you're dealing with individual hygiene needs that it is an individual preference. Some people like one thing, some people like another. So some people may like bar soap, other people may like liquid soap. So know what your family needs and what their preferences are. Um, it is easier to buy that way and purchase that way. That's Therefore, everybody is comfortable. So don't forget about your body washes, your shampoos, your conditioners, and the products for your hair to include your combs, your brushes, and whatever it is that you will utilize. Don't forget to purchase that for your family needs. This is a DIY slide. Do it yourself. When using bar soap, Sometimes when you use it, eventually it gets down to be so small and thin that it's almost hard to use anymore. You can start to accumulate those in the container. And once you have so many, this, these are steps in which you can use to formulate a new bar that you can begin using again. So um, if you're using this, you go ahead and grate it down and then you melt it and then you can place it in a soap mold and reform it for another soap bar. There are so many different ways you can do it. You can make your own soap, you can add infused oils, you can add herbs and spices, whatever it is that you would like to do, but there is a way to reuse your soap if you need it. It is also important to remember that when you are in this particular situation where um, it's a grid down, there's no electricity, or you have to stay in your house for a while, cleaning is very important. So you wanna make sure you have your paper towels on hand, your rags on hand, and other cleaning things for your personal needs. Ladies, don't forget about your female products. Stay as comfortable as possible during these time of distress. Remember the things that you like, what works for you, and make sure you have plenty enough that you don't have to worry about running out. Note, if you work and you have a flexible spending account, a FSA account, most of these products are covered for purchase. Your oral health is also a part of your hygiene. So don't forget about your toothbrushes, whether soft, medium, or hard bristles, whether they need to be charged or battery operated. If they do need to be charged, have a way in which you would need to charge them. And if they are battery operated, make sure you have extra batteries. Don't forget about your toothpaste, your mouthwash, and the different needs such as floss and different things that you would need to clean your teeth. If you didn't know, baking soda, also is a way in which you can use to brush your teeth and get them clean. It doesn't taste the best and it does not freshen your breath, but it will clean your teeth. Um, you shouldn't swallow it, but it will clean your teeth. And also coconut oil. Coconut oil has many benefits. Um, you can use it for your oral health. So go ahead and do your research and look it up and see how coconut oil can assist you and your family. In a grid down situation, or even just now, it is good to keep your household clean, as clean as possible, to help keep down sicknesses and disease and help keep your family healthy. 
So you want to make sure that you have your cleaning products on hand, your washing or laundry detergents on hand, disinfecting and sanitizing products on hand. You may not know, or you may know, but back in the day, there was a such thing called a washing board. If you see that picture that's in the upper left-hand corner, this is where people wash their clothes manually. Um, and then they would rinse them. And then they would either wring the water out by hand or they would run it through a thing called a clothes wringer. It is manual labor, but this is a way to keep your clothes clean if there is no electricity. Also, there are several recipes online in which you can make your own laundry detergent. You will buy some of the simple products. Some of them are in the picture in the lower right hand corner. You will buy these products, do your research, find the recipes, um, buy these products, and you can make your own laundry detergent. And some of them may be more cost efficient for you and may last longer and be more suitable for you and your family. Also in doing your research, you will find that there are updated ways in which you can wash your clothes without electricity, so you don't have to do the manual labor. They do have more convenient ways to help. I cannot leave out liquid bleach when we're talking about sanitation. Definitely, we went over this in the previous uh, session, but just to go ahead and mention it again on things you would need to do in which to utilize bleach. You want to follow exactly the recommended uh, recipe and make sure that your house is clean and sanitized in times of distress. At the end of each of these sessions, you will see this slide that says three P's, pray, prepare, and practice. Pray. Of course, you be, should be praying every day throughout each day. Times are moving fast, and sometimes you barely have enough time to catch up with it. So as you begin to pray, the Lord will begin to show you not only the different things that's going on in the world, but how to prepare for what is to come, spiritually and naturally. Prepare. Prepare is an action word. So take action. Do something. If you haven't started, start. Begin by just making a simple list. On that list, include what is of necessity and then what is optional. Add and take away those items as you need. Lastly, practice. Practice your preps. That's very important. In times of disaster, you will not have the time to break open the box and try to read the instructions. So practice now. Know what it does. Know where you stored it and know how to use it. Also include your family in all of this. Your family should be included when you are praying, when you are preparing, and when you are practicing. And this includes your children. Know that a day may come where food and water may be scarce. Prepare your children so they're not caught off guard. Work together as a family. Be prepared for what is to come. Acknowledge the Lord in all your ways and he will direct your path. My God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That's found in Philippians chapter 4 verse 19. I wanted to encourage you just not to be overwhelmed by the information that's provided in, in these sessions. It is all suggestive. It's just to help you along the way to maybe help you put things together where you're just not even sure where to start. Start with the necessities and then go to what's optional. I'll say it again. Start with the necessities and then go to what's optional. It is important that you don't panic, but you take your time, you think it through, and just start somewhere. And not to de delay or to defer, but just to push forward and start doing something today.